I came up as a participant in Warriors in Quiet Waters in 2009. And it was just, it was just timing. We were, my wife and I were thinking about transitioning out of the Army and came up here and just, I fell in love with, with this place, with everything about it. Everywhere you looked was some kind of beauty. And when I came up here and I saw some of the state and the rivers especially, I just fell in love and threw the idea out to my wife and it took us about a year to make it happen, but transitioned out of the Army the next year and looking back on it now and today, it's just, it was, there's no other, there's no other right call I could have made. It was the right move for me and my family. It's just been tremendous for myself, especially for my kids. Growing up in this kind of environment, it's, it's, it's just phenomenal. I'll never forget when I moved here as I was driving down from Big Sky into Bozeman through the Gallatin Canyon and being alongside the river and just dropping in and how beautiful it was and seeing all the different mountain ranges. And when I was back home in Colorado, I'd have to drive, you know, like an hour and a half to two hours just to, to get to to some decent fly fishing. And now I have a, a five minute drive from where I live to get to the East Gallatin. And so if I'm having a tough day or, you know, I get out of class late in the afternoon, I can still jump in my car and I can get to the river and I can get some casts in. And Montana has been crucial in helping me heal and I feel, I feel at home in Montana. It's something that I've honed in on since being up here and being with Warriors in Quiet Waters, it really came to a head with, it's about relationships. It's about the guys that are, something that I, I miss from the military, it's about the guys beside you. And moving up here initially, it took some time to be able to get connected with people. And once that connection was made, that ain't going away. And it's the relationships that I've built over, over what, three years I've been here? So I think that's probably what I love most about Montana. You know, yeah, times can get tough, but at the end of the day, you know, like, we're all still pretty fortunate and pretty lucky to be where we're at. I fish to just enrich my life, just to enrich it. And I feel like I get out there just to laugh with my friends. I had a NCO on my second deployment, and he pulled me aside, and this was probably some of the best advice I ever got, but it's so simple. And he said, no matter how bad it gets, don't forget to giggle. And I go out and I giggle on the water. I giggle with my buddies, and I love it. And that's why I go out and I fish. I don't go to forget. I just go out to slow down. And so when people need nature or they need fishing or they need hunting or whatever, whatever it is for them, if they're escaping their life, then I feel like they're not doing it right. But to each his own. Fishing for me is different for a lot of guys. And so, photography is my thing. Yeah. And you took me out there, just being able to go out there and take pictures of you fishing, and being out there on the river, that pulled me out of my dark spot. Because I think the river speaks to each of us differently. But being out there with you, that, that was a good, good day. And it got me to where I'm at now with, with school, so. Anyways, what do you think, Roger? <laughs> For so long, I think we all have been around that where it's been so much destruction and everything, and when we release a fish, mm -hmm. it's, it's continuing life. So when I catch a good fish, I get, I'm pumped to put it back in the river so that 
the next guy could experience that and have that feeling. And I hate goodbyes more than anybody. <laughs> but that's a goodbye that I don't mind at all. What if that fish has the same impact as the first fish that I ever caught on a fly rod had on me? I hope that the next person that catches that fish is has that appreciation or has that pretty amazing experience. What I find when I'm out on the water is life at its in depth, uh, whether that's me being a father, being a husband, being a brother and a friend, it's it tells me to ponder all these things that are actually important. There's just the, the water, being out on the water, it doesn't matter what water it is, as long as you're away, it just, it, it has, <laughs> I don't want to use the word magical, but I mean, that's, that's the word that I think of when I think about being on the water, it just has magical properties. It's just, it's just magic that happens out there. And my body knows that once I'm out on the water, it knows to shut down other parts of my mind and it, it doesn't forget what I've been through and it doesn't forget the friends I've lost. It doesn't forget, you know, the hard times of, of recovery during my injuries. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't let me forget that. It, I mean, more like it helps me embrace everything that's going on in my life and everything that I've been through. Whenever I feel like I'm too in, into my life or if I need to actually pause and you know, take care of me for a second. It's, I go, you know, and whenever I do come off the river, it's like a reset. I come back, I feel, I almost, I almost feel refreshed and I feel rejuvenated. It's, it's back to that magic. It's just, it's just magical how it does it. And it doesn't matter if I'm there for 30 minutes just for, to wet a line really quick or if it's all day for eight hours. It's a good reset and it's, it does my heart good, it does my kids good, it does my wife good, it, it does everybody that's around me good and it allows me to do more good for other people. It's, it's just healthy for everybody all around just from taking, a t taking the time to fish on the river for a little while. It's like a reset. <laughs>